Hey everybody, Matt here from Matt's Movies, Music and More and my special guest Andrew welcoming you to this special episode of What Did You Think? So yeah, we have another special on this channel. You lucky people. Yes, so to close out the year 2019 we're going to talk about a movie that came out 20 years ago in 1999. Because you like your dates, don't you? Yes. And this is this is a movie about important dates. Yep. So tonight we're going to party like it's nineteen ninety nine again. Futurama did that joke, but um, fair enough. Okay. So um, the movie that we've chosen to talk about, well, in particular, it's me that's chosen it. So yeah. you don't want to take the blame on this one. No, um, I don't. <laughs> so the movie that we're going to talk about today is a movie that. It, it coincides with a lot of other things that were going on at the time um, in, in the real world and I thought it would be fun to do this given that it's a movie that I haven't seen since back in the day. Mm -hmm. So the film we are going to do today is the 1999 movie End of Days which is a movie which is directed by Peter Hyams and it stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Robin Tunney and Gabriel Byrne. You wanted me to do my Arnold Schwarzenegger voice again, didn't you? <laughs> you can do if you want. Well, we'll see how this goes. We? So, um, okay. end of days. Had you seen it before? We've done it. Um, in in segments, in isolated parts. There was a time when I was uh, subscribed to a certain um, cable satellite group. And, and flicking through their movie channels late at night, desperate to go to sleep, but I can't. And for a time around 2003, 2004, they would have two schlocky um, supernatural um, action movies playing at midnight when I was trying to get to sleep. So I'd have to watch these. Um, this and Highlander Endgame. Interesting choices. Mm. Don't you want to be inside me, McLeod? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, end of days. Um, it's going to be an interesting one to talk about today, given yeah. its uh, plot and everything. So um, if you can try and describe some of the plot, sir. Plot, some of the plot, yeah. Um, but what's end of days about? Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger fights the devil. Do you really need me to say any more than that? Okay, well, let's start <laughs> at the beginning, which in this case is 1979. Um, uh, a comet streaks over the moon, and because of this, somebody at the Vatican quickly checks their secret documents and goes, it's the eye of God, which means it ties into a prophecy that um, someone will be born tonight who will be, and be chosen to be the mother of the Antichrist by the devil himself and um this could be anyone in the it's a big planet it's a big work it could be anyone but for some reason we've zeroed in on one girl um called christine um being born in new york and as soon as she comes out her mother's tummy um she's quickly take secretly taken downstairs by some of the hospital staff who get a snake cut it open and sprinkle its blood on the baby girl I didn't know hospitals had a secret satanic mm. um, worshipping wing, but mm. um, that's um, hospital funding for you, I suppose. Mm. Is that topical enough? Mm. Um, anyway, cut to 20 years later um, in 1999, where we were introduced to two characters. Um, one is the, the devil himself, firstly in the form of a... Um, cheap um, 19 well exp expensive by 1999 standards um, invisible gargoyle computer effect who quickly possesses um, Gabriel Byrne we don't know the character's name uh, we, we'll just call him he was presumably some hapless banker but from this point on he's Satan he must be important because he was in a limousine which um, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, intervened yeah, to yeah. save his yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, we get introduced to Arnold Schwarzenegger in this um, <laughs> movie. Um, and he's playing a, a character called Jericho Kane. Mm. Yes, children, seriously, that's what his character is called. Um, a 
ex-cop who lives in a messy apartment whose wife and daughter were killed and now he works to make ends meet in a security company. Have we ticked off all the action cop route um, cliches here? Mm. Good. And his best buddy is uh, Chicago, played by... Kevin Pollock. Kevin Pollock, and yet I kept looking at him thinking, you're Silent Bob. <laughs> Kevin Smith. Well, it is it Kevin, but yeah, not yeah, Kevin but, Smith. Um, their latest assignment for the security firm is to protect this banker who turns out to be Gabriel Byrne, but they, they don't know that yet, obviously. But then some, some guy tries to shoot uh, Gabriel Byrne and runs up the fire exit to the... Um, uh, roof of a building so um, Arnold Schwarzenegger very quickly has to get to the chopper <laughs> and chase after this um, strange person <laughs> uh, corners in him in a subway <clears throat> when the man suddenly starts, reveals himself to be a priest and starts screaming the fa thousand years have ended, darkness is upon us, you do not know what you have done but Arnold Swar uh, Jericho shoots him and um, it, did the local police detective, uh, the chief of police, um, Amanda Waller, um, says, well, it's funny he said all that to you because he doesn't have a tongue. But so um, good old um, Jericho and Silent Bob um, start <laughs> investigating who this priest was. And that's probably where the step-by-step -step plot will end because first, uh, first hour of the movie is the investigation as to who the priest was. Why did he try to shoot Gabriel Byrne? Um, where is the girl? Uh, she's now grown up, but where is she? And once that's all established, the second half hour of the movie is Gabriel Byrne going, I'm coming for you, Christine. Chase, 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 run across New York, and oh no, will Arnold Schwarzenegger be able to save um, Christine from her fate of being impregnated and thus bringing about the end of days at midnight on New Year's Eve 1999. Well, I, I don't want to spoil it, but considering we're all still standing here 20 years later and barely still standing i think we all know the answer to that one yes um that's partly why i wanted to do this review because i feel that given the plot of the movie it has made it extremely dated because essentially this movie is really based about the fact that the world was supposed to end in 1999 because this happened to coincide with something that i thought we'd like to talk about which was you kids who are you, too young won't you remember You young this. whippersnappers. Yeah. yeah, you won't know this, but back in 1999, there was something that was called Y2K. Um, if you like your rap music, you'll know there was a song by Will Smith called uh, Will 2K. But Y2K was essentially this thing which was called the Millennium Bug, yeah. which meant that they thought that computers wouldn't be able to get past the 31st of December 1999 when the clock struck midnight of New Year's Day, 1st of January 2000. Uh, they thought that the clocks couldn't go from 99 to 2000 and they were panicking everyone by saying, the world is going to end, the bank's computers are going to reset, we're not going to have any money or whatever. Go out and buy the latest CD-ROMs for your PC to you save it this, for £10. And you will CD. have this guaranteed antivirus software that doesn't work. Yes, yeah, so if, if you were looking to make a quick buck, that would have been the perfect opportunity to bring a product like that out yeah. and scam everyone on it. But clearly that was a hoax. It was just a way of scaring people. But oh. um, going slightly off subject, um, do you remember what you were doing on New Year's Eve 1999 at all? Um, well, because um, the Doctor Who 1996 Paul McGann TV movie is based on a similar a similar New Year's Eve 1999 and because um, the Master has interfered with the TARDIS, so that's the big line, by midnight tonight this planet will be pulled inside out. I thought I'd watch that again for <laughs> giggles. Fair enough. For me, I remember in 1999 on the New Year's Eve, um, earlier that day, one of my all-time favourite, if not my favourite movie, which I'll review one day, uh, Tron, uh, was shown on terrestrial TV. And I kind of thought, it's great to see that that's being honoured by being shown as one of the last movies on terrestrial television in the UK. 
Um, but that evening we went to a, a family uh, party and by the time we got home, which I think was in the early hours of New Year's Day, I remember going into my bedroom, turning on the TV and seeing that the first movie that was being shown on terrestrial TV by Channel 5 was Emmanuel. Okay, well that's Channel 5. But yeah, so Channel 5 doesn't... is a UK channel that in the late 1990s when it began, it was famous for showing softcore pornography, yeah. even though it wasn't really pornography, it was just like softcore kind of erotic thrillers. Yeah. But the fact that they showed Emmanuel as the first movie of the new yeah. millennium, I was like, okay. Thank, thank goodness they've got past that. <laughs> and now they're known for showing American imports. Yeah. So that's a step up. I guess, I guess. But um, going back to um, End of Days, um, would you agree that you feel it's very dated, the movie, regarding special effects, the plot, everything? It's... Um unfortunate but um it's um what got me was how the plot is very loosely strung together or you have to make huge leaps of faith <laughs> ironically <laughs> enough um but um the, like um the, the 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 tongueless priest that i mentioned um at one point he gets um Satan comes to get him and then when um, Arnie and the police come to see the priest he's hung up on the ceiling uh, crucified and flayed his skin has been flayed off and uh, inscriptions have been made on it and uh, you know, oh, how did this happen how did did anyone come in here well maybe he did it to himself <laughs> do you know he's hung up on the ceiling and, Ar and I think Arnold makes the um, sarcastic comment of, oh, did he get that last scalpel in his head through him as well? I think that's the least of your concerns. Crazy. And then from that, they said, oh, the, the thousand years has ended. Satan is coming back. Christ in New York. So then they've already got a photo of the girl. We, we now really have to find this girl. But... We don't know who she is or where she is. Well, maybe it's not Christ in New York. It's Christine York. And lo and behold, they find Christine York like five minutes later. Yes, I was kind of puzzled how they got... How do you make leaps of deduction like this? That's literally in days. This is based over what, a five-day cycle? Five-day cycle, so you've got to count of, oh no, five days left until the, 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 the time. F f you know, five hours left until midnight. And, yeah. And, how do you do that? How do you... Christ, Christine... Yeah. Uh, and and then the big kicker, which is how why this is happening now, that the, the priest... Mr. Exposition Priest. Is that Rod Steiger? Uh, Rod Steiger, who um, says, um, you, the number of the beast, uh, 666, well, sometimes in dreams and visions, things are seen upside down. It's not 666, it's 999, as in the year 1999. But if, if you and that, that's it, that's the hook on this, the prophecy. And even Arnold makes the comment of, oh, is that Eastern Standard Time? <laughs> <laughs> the movie this the... is stupid. It's, the... it's, it's held to the, the getting from point A to point B to C to the progression of how we come how this plot can possibly happen is held together by blue tack by by sellotape it doesn't know what it wants to be it doesn't know if it wants to be a comedy if it wants to be an action movie if it wants to be a horror movie or, or a drama or, or um what was going on in the late 90s and early 2000s which was this whole I suppose it could be described as a religious exploitation where there were films like Christ this. exploitation I like that that's good like that and Stigmata and uh, Bless the Child and all these other type of movies that were coming out at the same sort of time. Well, ba basically, this is uh, well, this movie badly wants to be The Exorcist or yeah. Rosemary's Baby, but it is not clever enough. No. Um, 
again, um, another thing I, I would say that's sort of similarly linked, although not really to this movie, which is that I remember in, I think, the late 90s as well, as a bit of a joke in the UK, um, on Christmas Day, um, one movie that was shown by a terrestrial television channel, which is Channel 4, again, the heroes of controversial television, most television channels would show classic Christmas movies, like It's a Wonderful Life and stuff like that. Yeah. What did Channel 4 show? The Omen. They showed The Omen on Christmas Day. How controversial is that? But That feels like a middle finger. Yes, yeah. but with End of Days, <clears throat> it just seems so weirdly cast. I mean, I like the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger's name is Jericho, but at the same time, I just think, why is he in this movie? It doesn't feel like the right fit. He, yeah. Um, I mean, on the one hand, I'm glad that he's playing... Um, or at least he's trying. I like him. Play, I think he's doing a great job. To play a flawed mm. character. Okay? An atheist who is dragged into this big apocalyptic religious um, event. Mm. And he's... he's He's flawed and tortured because we see that his wife and child were brut were brutally murdered. And but we don't know whole... that until a lot later in the movie. No. So we don't know his um, his plight. Because at the beginning of the film, I, I assumed he was a cop. And it wasn't until um, the uh, the chief of police, or whatever her name was. Um, what was her name again? Um, I know the actress's name C is C.C.H. Pounder, yeah, yeah. which is why I made the Amanda Waller joke. Yeah. She um she comes along and she's like, Well, you're not a cop anymore, Jericho. Are you still drinking on the job, are you, Jericho? You know, so clearly yeah. he must have got fired for drinking, I'm guessing, or something yeah. like that. But his relationship with his uh, buddy, played by Kevin Pollock, I mean, I like the silent Bob reference you made there, but yeah. um I would have liked to have seen a bit more of banter between them, but even still when they were making jokes in the film, it was like it was kind of like, you know, a home you're, run being missed altogether. It didn't work. You're making banter for the sake of making banter and nothing else. Mm. Um, we'd like to talk about Gabriel Byrne. I think Gabriel Byrne's fantastic. I, I really like him as an actor. And in this film, I think he's really good. He's doing the proper sinister presence that he is required of this. Like yeah. the moment when he goes into the bathroom and he um, he gets possessed by this um, entity, it goes straight into him and the people he's been hanging out with all of a sudden he just starts snogging one of the women at the table. He leaves, she's sort of looking at him like, come back, I really was enjoying that and all of a sudden, yeah. bang! The, the restaurant blows up. You think that would have been, a, um, snogging the wife of the other guy would have been enough, but... No, he has to blow up the restaurant behind him. And then there's that scene where um, we have um, a few supporting cameo actors here. People like um, Miriam Margolis. Is, is that her name? Miriam, Mi Miriam Margolis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, a yeah. bit She um, was in the, the first Black Adder series, if I recall. Yeah. Um, she plays the nanny of Christine York, who happens to have been the... Was she the nurse at the hospital who took um, Christine down to yeah. wherever it was? Well, she's in cahoots with the whole Satan thing. Yeah, because the, the main doctor's played by um, the great Udo Kia. Yeah. And um, what I'm getting to the point is, is that Udo Kia's got a wife and daughter. And when the Gabriel Byrne character shows up and, and he meets them, he immediately dreams that he's having sex with both of them and the two women get merged into one. Did you see, yeah, see that? That was a freaky enough. Um, yeah. sequence that almost justifies the Udo Kia character. Otherwise... Um, he said, uh, uh, go, goes to Satan and says, we failed to get the girl or we couldn't get in the house. Oh, well, you're no good to me then. Yeah. Bangers, you, you could have had him as a sidekick or as a yeah. good dude job, but uh, you, who don't care, man? Yeah. Uh, uh, why did you even have him in the movie? Maybe because of Blade being such a success the year or two before that maybe they thought, I'll oh, put him in this, but I felt he was very underused. Un uh, underused? Well, given that the, the main central character in this film is um, Christine, played by Robin Tunney, who a few years earlier had done um, the movie The Craft. And I think after this, she did a movie called Supernova, which was a terrible sci-fi <laughs> movie, which apparently was directed by Walter Hill. But um, I believe he got his name taken off and it was put as someone else. But regarding Robin Tunney, I don't think she's anything special in this movie at all. I don't think it the could, character's very good or anything like that. It could, it could have... 
she's trying to look scared or bewildered or frightened or timid mm. but looking through the um facts for this movie apparently Liv Tyler was supposed to play Christine at some point for this movie and that does make yeah a anybody could have done this to be honest no disrespect to Robin Tunney I kind of think that Liv Tyler may have been a better choice would have brought something to yeah, it yeah yeah Oh, and Tom Cruise would have been Jericho, apparently. That would have made you, more that sense. That would have made more sense. That would have made more sense given the fact that um, in the same year, in 1999 then, that Tom Cruise had just done a little bit part in uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia, in which was, in my opinion, I think probably one of the best acting roles that he's ever done, albeit a brief role. But to see him in a movie like this, I think that would have worked. That would You would have... He would have um, brought the... Well, I don't, I don't want to disrespect um, Arnold Schwarzenegger here, but you would have believed him as a flawed um, ex-cop who's trying to face off against the might of the, the strength, the power of the devil. Because even in this, Schwarzenegger gets that moment where he goes and gets loads and loads of guns, the typical Ooh, Schwarzenegger that's thing. A Schwarzenegger moment. He gets one or two Schwarzenegger moments. Otherwise, he's this big hulking guy going, "Please God, give me strength." And <laughs> I like that Joseph Manning. Please God, give me strength. But the thing is, is he, he does say it later on, doesn't he? Because he's like, I, "I lost my faith years ago." You yeah. Know? yeah. You're a fucking choir boy. Can't <laughs> <handle> me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because there's the moment when the devil was trying to make a, pl a, a deal with him. And... Which, is, which is a, you know, a tense or a, a dramatic moment of trying to seduce him. I can give you your family back. Yeah, but the thing is, it just doesn't make any sense why do that when secretly he could already, he could kill Jericho and get it anyways. Because there is a well, moment, isn't there, where... There is a bit of dialogue about the devil can't see inside the house of gods. Ah. But not Jericho's house. It, yeah. But no, you've got that moment when Schwarzenegger himself is crucified up and the, and yeah. the, the um, beggars and the... Sim symbolism. Stuff. Yes. Um, again, I wonder what... Well, he did it for Conan the Barbarian, so he's had experience. I wonder what people thought about this movie when it came out theatrically in 1999 because this was literally released in the US a month before the end of the year yeah well maybe people thought ooh Arnold Schwarzenegger versus the devil but could this have been billed as the end of the world movie to coincide with the whole Y2K thing and been instead of an artistic merit movie this has just been brought out as a way of just playing on a on a on a potential you know that the world is going to end, you know, that this is, you know, if you've got to go and see a movie to see if the world ends or not, see this film. Because this movie made double its money. It made profit, but yeah. the film itself got terrible reviews. Um, I believe I've read as well, I don't know if you've heard this, but Schwarzenegger said that he felt, because he was a, I think he was a producer on this film, I'm not sure, but I think he said that Peter Hyams, in his view, is probably not the right choice of director for this movie. And I'm not knocking uh, Peter Hyams, because no. Peter Hyams, I believe, also directed... 2010? Yes, yeah, thank you. I do have conflicted feelings of when, in relation to the director for this movie because it is a very workmanlike get from here, now we go over here, now we go over here. You know, not bad, not flat or static, but it's there's no visual distinction, no... Mm. Um, nothing special about it. It's just get get this movie done. Get the camp. Get the cameras rolling. Get the footage. And yet, um, I don't want to say a bad thing about Peter Himes because he did Twenty Ten, and I like that movie. I think he he's did one Atlanta of the, as well. He's one of those Connery one. He's one of those precious few directors who's had to follow in the footsteps of a Stanley Kubrick movie. Yeah. For that, I give him the props. Yeah, but I mean, given that, as we said earlier, this. Christ exploitation? Yeah, that's what I've heard from someone. Christ exploitation. Yeah. So clearly, 1999 to sort of 2000, 2001, you had all these kind of movies and stuff. But I just don't really know who the audience is for that. You know, for for this movie or Christ exploitation? Christ exploitation in general. Because um, in the UK, we um, we had um, sort of um, religious kind of um, 
fetishes, like with a, a video film label, Redemption, where they would do sort of sexy nuns and sort of thing. But to have a movie like this with all this religious overtones and stuff like that, it just seems a bit, uh, you know, compared to, say, The Exorcist, which uh, is a much better movie than this. Um, but I remember liking End of Days a lot when it came out. I thought it was really great. Um, the fact that I was a big fan of the early internet era time of soundboards, which were prank um, voices, that there were all these Arnold Schwarzenegger soundboards out there, which if you wanted to prank call someone, you could just press a phrase and it would say oh. the phrase on the phone. I never did it personally, but I used to mess around by doing like, um, I would like to talk to you about Thomas Aquinas, who happens to be the priest in this film, <laughs> or the... You are nothing compared to me. You are a fucking choir boy. A choir boy. A lot of the lines that are on the soundboards are from End of Days. And as well as Kindergarten Cop and all these other movies. But um, I suppose we have that to thank. But um, it does feel a little bit too long. I think the film, I think it's, that suffers. I, I don't know if um, it's just the way the script script was made or maybe our attention spans were better in those days but even then it feels like an awful lot of um Arnold Schwarzenegger and Silent Bob um investigating trying to find out the premise of the movie and it's only until the halfway point of the whole movie before we get a proper explanation and son it's run 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 to this place run 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 to that place oh no the devil's after us oh no you've double crossed me oh no i have to run into this nightclub oh no we have to run into this church heroic sacrifice mm. and then it ends yeah what did you think of that ending um again behind the scenes trivia that i've seen online apparently he, he was supposed to um, shall I just say, yeah, because sure. this is an old enough movie, um, he was supposed to live okay. in the original script, but um, was it Arnold Schwarzenegger or Peter Himes who floated the idea of, no, he should make a heroic sacrifice and Universal Studios went, oh, you know, you, we, you can't kill Arnie off. But they went ahead and made it as an alternative ending and everyone, test screenings went, actually we prefer this. Do you think that someone saw Gladiator and thought we've got to have the hero die, be reunited with his dead family? I suppose it was fashionable at the time now you mentioned Yeah, because that was a thing, wasn't it, yeah. where the hero would be reunited with their loved ones in it, the it, afterlife. It makes sense in terms of the story. Given that he wouldn't sacrifice... Um, Christine's life, give her up um, to have his wife and child again because he knew that even if he had them back, they had died, so they weren't them. They would be yeah, he, he said replicated. It's, it's not real. Does yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, End of Days for me was one of those movies that when it came out in the UK on home video DVD, um, it was one that it, it did okay. I remember being in the local video rental shop and um, seeing that compared to other movies that were out at the time, there wasn't as many copies of the movie as others. And I think given that it had already gone into the year 2000, I think the movie was already dated it, 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 as soon lost, as it entered the year 2000. Winter, yeah. So I kind of think this is kind of a lost, forgotten movie in the Schwarzenegger canon. And to be honest, Probably not a bad thing that it's kind of forgotten because it's of its time. I think if you showed this movie to a younger audience, I think they wouldn't have a clue. I just think they can't relate to what was going on at, in the world at that time with the Y2K and the, everything. The like kind that. of panic that this movie was drawing upon. Yes. Like I say, I mean, sometimes you get films that come out that are just made to cash in on something at that time. A good example being a movie that he's seen, uh, which I don't really want to, called The Emoji Movie, which pretty much is a film that is designed to promote something that is of the time, and then it I've, will be forgotten in an instant. I've not seen The Emoji Movie, but... Oh, um, have you not? No, I, avoid, oh, I'm I, really sorry. I avoided it deliberately. I'm really sorry. I man. know I go and watch everything that's new at the <laughs> cinema, but I'm I, sorry, I do have standards. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But do you get where I'm coming from? Where it's like, you know, sometimes movies do come out and it's just to cash in on but whatever's going the, on yeah, at well, that, that, that pop culture moment. Certainly that was um, old men going... We don't want to... I know you want... We 
um, someone wants to make a Popeye movie, but Popeye's not popular with the kids anymore. What's popular with the kids? Emojis. We don't know anything about them, but we'll write a script like we know how the internet works. We make millions of dollars and then we move on to the next thing. That's pretty much what I think Hollywood is kind of now anyways. It's kind of a, a give the people what they want, they forget or, it and they move on. what they think. Public yeah, and they forget it and they move on. And mm. I kind of think that End of Days is one of those movies where the audience was there for that month and a bit, mm. and then it kind of died away and has yeah. kind of faded into obscurity. Yeah. Um, I, I, from what I've read about, was it it got Razzies or was nominated? I believe for it Razzies was nominated. And, it, and, it, and Rotten Tomatoes, you know, the bastion of knowledge of. Film I don't use it, so I can't movie. judge it. We we all obey whatever Rotten Tomatoes believes. What is it? It's eleven percent. Is that really bad? Yeah, you you do know the scale is like one to one hundred, right? Yeah. If it's uh, if it's nearly ten percent, that's just bad. See, to me, um, if I go with IMDb, I think this is around a five. This sort of gets. Yeah. Um. What I'm saying is, um, I'm sure there are worse movies worse made movies out there but um this is i'm sure i've said this before i'll say it again this is a perfect get drunk movie friday night get your friends get some pizza get lots of alcohol and turn this on that's the best way to enjoy this movie nowadays and i don't think you ever see this movie shown on terrestrial tv i think it's uh, kind of again because it's of its time i just don't think it will ever get shown again mm -hmm. but um comparing um, another movie as we said earlier on the um Christ stigmata did you ever see that when it came out i know the name but i don't think i because if i recall stigmata was the more successful of the two and wasn't as dated given that it didn't reference like the end of the world in 1999 and i think that's the problem this movie has if it hadn't said that it was going to be the end of the world 1999 this movie could have crossed over into into now you know so but kudos for them trying to cash in on the thing but i just think they should have released it a lot closer to the end of 1999 yeah. to tie in with maybe in fact if they'd have released it literally boxing day or something like that in america that would have been some good marketing. Arnold Schwarzenegger stars in the end of the world movie, End of Days. Yeah. And uh, as much star power and, you know, act professional action, machismo and charisma he brings to this, they should have cast someone other than Arnold Schwarzenegger for the lead to make it more conv dramatically convincing. I, I, I like the fact you said it was Tom Cruise that was considered. I think that would have been a better choice. But I'm not knocking Arnie. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. And I think he does a good job of what he does. And I love the name Jericho Kane. I think it's a cool name. Yeah, well, it is, does like so much with this movie. It's a big... How much more religious can you get? Yeah. To does... call his mate Chicago? How weird is that? Well, he's a typical buddy. Jericho, character. Chicago, Christine, York. They're just weird names. Yeah. But... Um, I suppose we should wrap it up. Really, Probably. I I'll, I'll one more thing that <laughs> popped into my head midway through this is that funny that I mentioned I saw the Doctor Who TV movie, um, the, the same episode as this. Same composer. Really? Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Did... It's almost like the stars were aligned. I was going to say, the soundtrack to this movie, the actual um, uh, compiled soundtrack... This is what they seem to do with all those Christportation movies, was putting in industrial rock, things like Nine Inch Nails and all that. I don't know why putting in all this death metal and whatever together, it just seemed a bit weird. Yeah. But, Unless it's like the music of the devil. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But, yeah, I suppose that's our review of End of Day. So this mm. is our way of ending... Uh, the 2010s and going into the new decade of 2020. So apologies if it wasn't the movie that you were expecting us to do. But uh, I don't know what you can add to that. Um, <laughs> let, um, like everybody on in 19, maybe more so than 1999, let's hope for a fresh decade and hopefully better times for humanity. Yeah, and that's 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 all I'll say on that score before I get too controversial. Yes. So 
onwards and upwards towards 2020 and a happy new year and yeah. all that. But um, thank you very much for checking the video out today. Don't forget to check out all our social media links where you can find out about all the future episodes that we've done and all the previous stuff. And we've got some good ideas coming in the near future. There'll be some new series coming soon, I promise. Mm -hmm. And we've also got... If you want to check out Andrew's series at the Movies of Andrew, if you want to hear about more recent movies rather than this one, check him out. He'll tell you about them. Um, we do What Did You Think? So there's plenty of other episodes on here and also my solo videos as well. So thank you very much, everybody. All the very best to you. And a happy new year to you all on behalf of the channel. Um, let's hope that 2020 goes without a bang. Um, I don't know if you would like to do a closing yeah. statement, sir. That's a nice shirt. <laughs> it's like he was doing Terminator there for a minute there. He was like, say, hey, that's a nice bike. Yes. yes. Hey, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.